Let's welcome in Avery Johnson here. We're going to talk about some trades that need to happen in the East. Avery, we've given you one trade per each team we're going to talk about here. Let's start with the Celtics, of course, just coming up short of that NBA title. You and I have talked about how this team uh, is lacking in experience. Look, they got a bunch of it in the postseason. However, you do want them to target a 21-year-old. Yeah, when you look at the Boston Celtics, especially with Marcus Smart being their full-time point guard, he's more of a combo guard. He can play the two spot. He can play the three spot. And when when they have to lean on him as heavily as they leaned on him, uh, I don't think that's good in terms of that they're reaching him fullest potential. So I would suggest a guy like Kyra Lewis, uh, even though he's coming off of an ACL injury, uh, Marcus Smart is more like a fastball. Kyra is more like a curveball, speedy young player uh, that can get up and down the floor. Uh, they, they need a little bit more of a somebody that can offset Marcus Smart's uh, weaknesses. But Kyra can drive to the basket, penetrate. Uh, he's got a nice three-point shot. Uh, I just think he can provide the speed and the hustle to Marcus' Smart muscle. So I think even though they drafted uh, J.D. Davison out of Alabama, I'm looking at another Alabama kid that I coach, Kyra Lewis. Let's go to the heat. Uh, rumor mill heating up that the 76ers are looking to land P.J. Tucker here. So what's the move that the Heat need to make? I think they should be all in on Bradley Beal, uh, especially, you know, with Tyler Hero at the end of the season didn't play some of his best basketball. Obviously, there were some injury concerns. They just need somebody to uh, help Jimmy Butler take some of the pressure off of him offensively. And I think Bradley Beal, with his experience, I think a new change of scenery for him uh, leaving the Washington Wizards and going down to South Beach, be a part of that that system with Eric Spostra, uh, who I think is a very uh, outstanding coach over his career, multiple champions. Uh, he'll be an assistant coach on the national team under Steve Kerr. So I just think that culture environment, environment of winning a uh, team that have you know, obviously lost in the seven game of the Eastern Conference Finals. If you add back Bradley Beal to that mix, then they could basically elevate themselves to potentially be the favorites uh, in the Eastern Conference going into next season. But Avery, what would they have to give up to get him? Yeah, that's that's the key. I think, you know, like Tyler Hero would have to be uh, involved, maybe Duncan Robinson. Uh, they got to do everything. The Heat has to do everything in their power to not include Bam Adebayo in that trade because I think that would be more of a lateral move. So if they can trade some of those other pieces uh, while keeping Bam and Jimmy Butler intact, uh, I think that's going to be very beneficial. And then also Kyle Lowry struggled with his health at the end of the season, and that's why they desperately need a guy like Bradley Beal. This is why I'm always so wary of buying – team shirts because I've still wanted the Tyler Hero like snarl is that the word uh shirt and sure enough you're trying to send him away but that's fine let's go to the Bucks here Avery I, th I thought this was interesting you don't necessarily care about the name but you do care about a particular position from a particular team tell us how yeah the Bucks. I think they they need another wing player and a wing player with with some size and if you look at the San Antonio Spurs they have an oversupply of wing players on, on their roster. Uh, you look at uh, Lonnie Walker, the Ford is the guy that I'm really targeting along with Keldon Johnson. You look at what the Spurs did in the draft. They drafted basically three wing players. So if they can poach one, if the Bucks can poach one of these wing guys, uh, Keldon Johnson won a gold medal with our national team. Lonnie Walker, the Ford is a guy with outstanding athleticism. They can poach one of those guys off the Spurs roster to go along, you know, with, with you know, Middleton, especially, you know, when he got injured, they struggled this year. Drew Holiday is outstanding. Obviously, Giannis Antetokounmpo is, is a two-time uh, MVP, but you need depth and you need quality depth. And I think one of those young Spurs players coming off of the Bucks bench or as a part-time starter when there is an injury, uh, could go a significantly long way for the Bucks. Avery, let's talk about the 76ers. I mentioned a lot of rumors uh, that they are eyeing P.J. Tucker there. Uh, you like another one of your former players, though, to go to the 76ers? Yeah, I think uh, Colin Sexton, uh, because 
I think his time is up uh, in Cleveland. Uh, Darius Garland, he'll get an extension this summer. Um, they drafted Oche Abaji out of Kansas. Uh, they, there's too much depth, and I just don't think there's a fit for him anymore. So I thought about the Lakers at one time, but Colin Sexton, especially with James Harden on the downside of his career, James Harden had a, you know, 40 games where he didn't even dunk a basketball, and I think his injury history is catching up with him. Uh, so providing somebody like Colin Sexton who can score the basketball, play on the ball, off the ball, finding a new home. This kid's very athletic, explosive, uh, nice mid-range game, improved three-point shooter. Um, you know, if he plays for Doc Rivers, I think it takes his career to an entirely different level. So Colin Sexton would be a really nice fit with the 76ers. How would he play alongside Tyrese Maxey? Oh, you can play both of those guys together. Uh, what a backcourt with he and Maxi uh, playing on the ball, off the ball. Maxi is a little, you know, a better three-point shooter, has more range than Sexton. But but Sexton defensively, uh, he's a pit bull, and you know potentially can be a all defensive uh, first team player in his future site. So I think he and Maxi would be man, that would be, that would be an incredible backcourt, especially when James Harden is has to miss a game or if he's injured. I, I remember talking to Colin Sexton in the entire interview. He had a bathroom on and a bathrobe and it was a lot of fun. That's just popping in my head here. Let's go to the Nets. Um, Avery, you asked a psychic to look in a crystal ball and figure out what's going to happen with the Nets and Kyrie and it's going to be black. Like nobody's going to know what's going to happen there. Give me a sure thing, a sure trade that the Nets need to make. Well, the Nets definitely need to make a trade for a big man. Um, you look at Robert Williams, how he hurt them. Uh, and all of the big guys that they played against on opposing centers on on the other teams. So I would look at a guy like Rudy Gobert. Uh, he needs another change of address with Utah. You know, he and Donovan Mitchell obviously has paired up well in terms of a championship formula. Can you imagine Rudy Gobert on the court, you know, last line of defense with a guy like Kevin Durant who draws so much attention? He'll continue to catch those lobs. Now, obviously, he and Ben Simmons will be very difficult to play on the court together. And that's why I'm hedging in terms of what happens with Ben Simmons. We don't know when he's going to come back, how he's going to come back, and how effective he's going to be. So that's why I think a guy like Rudy Gobert providing that size and rebounding, desperately rebounding that the Brooklyn Nets uh, need. Uh, because, again, offense sells tickets, but defense wins championships. And that's a team that definitely struggles from the defensive end. Avery, our producer, Jack, told us that you were also interested in Mitchell Robinson. So would you rather trade for Rudy Gobert or just sign Mitchell Robinson? Well, if you can sign Mitchell Robinson outright, that's the route that I would go. But I'm assuming that Mitchell Robinson, he's going to be out west somewhere, maybe in Phoenix, if they can't re-sign De'Anthony Ayton, DeAndre Ayton, then maybe they make a play on on Mitchell Robinson is what I'm hearing. So, but if you can sign Mitchell Robinson outright, that would be my plan 1A. And then Rudy Gobert would be 1B in terms of a trade. Avery, I've not gotten the chance to talk to you since the draft. You did a great job. Uh, sent you a little text that it was looking good. I'm not sure the last time you've been home, though. Clearly, you're still in a hotel room. So I hope sooner rather than later you get home to Dallas uh, and tell Miss Cassandra that we say hi there. Thanks so much for joining us. All right, thank you. Taking a look at the odds to win the East, the Celtics right now on top, uh, just barely above the Bucks, and then of course come the Nets, but who knows what's gonna happen with that Nets team. Keep it right here on HQ for the very latest. Do you want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game? The highlights, the picks, the instant analysis, no yelling, no fake debates, no politics. Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.